Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, this video is about something different than I thought it was going to be today. And time after time, when I'm examining 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, as I'm reading it, as I'm preparing to run it, as I'm playing it, one of the things I keep on running up against is very often I'll find parts of the system that I like, that I feel that are well designed, and at the same time I find them obscured or hidden or ruined by really, really poor writing. And you know, over and over again, to my dismay, I find out that the book is fairly bad at explaining how the game works. And it can present things in a very confusing manner. And this is one of those things that to me is unacceptable for a game, period. But, you know, not to harp on this, but I'm going to harp on this a little bit. You know, for the role-playing game that's the most visible, uh, that has the biggest budget by far, um, for a lot of these things to come out, you know, just with really poor editing, really poor proofreading, um, really poor reading for, like, you know... Uh, how comprehensible is this? How well does this explain things? Not so great. So, let's give the example. So, I was actually going to start talking about the Battlemaster version of the fighter and comparing some of those abilities to some of the abilities you can do in combat, but I got lost down this rabbit hole. And part of what I got lost down was I, I looked at two weapon fighting briefly in the regular combat section. And so it says when you take an attack action and attack with a light melee weapon that you're holding in one hand, you can use a bonus action to attack with a different light melee weapon that you're holding and et cetera, et cetera. And so for a second, I was thinking to myself, because it had been a while since I read another part of the book, you know, where's this bonus action come from? Because it says, you can use a bonus action to attack with a different light melee weapon. So I went back and I'm looking, I'm trying to figure out where the heck this thing comes from. Is it the action surge that the fighter gets? No, that's an extra action. And I feel like it really is, no, no, it's actually a bonus action. How does bonus actions come about? Well, read bonus actions. Various class features spells and other abilities let you take an additional action on your turn called a bonus action. The cunning action feature, for example, allows, allows a rogue to take a bonus action. You can take a bonus action only when a special ability, spell, or other feature of the game states that you can do something as a bonus action. You otherwise don't have a bonus action to take. You can only take one bonus action on your turn, so you must choose which bonus action to use when you have more than one available. Okay, and it explains a little bit more like some of the restrictions and what have you, but Go through this again, really, uh, because I think it's really, really important. Various class features, spells, and other abilities let you take an additional action. These grant you a bonus. So these things can grant you a bonus action. And it says a little bit differently, you can take a bonus action only when a special ability, spell, or other feature of the game states that you can do something as a bonus action. But what does it say for two-weapon fighting? It says, I can use a bonus action. It didn't say, it granted me a bonus action. This sounds like splitting hairs. But what I decided to do is go look through the entire three-book set and, and see how exactly they present this sort of thing. And I came up with some very interesting answers uh, as I started going down that rabbit hole, which got me a little bit dismayed. Now, you know, I can first say that something like two-weapon fighting, just to harp on that for one second, well, it's, it's not a class feature, it's not a spell, and it's not an ability. Um, okay, so it's not a special ability, it's not a spell, or other feature of the game. It's, I guess you, it's, maybe it's an other feature of the game, and the bonus action um, is you know, created because you're holding a weapon in both hands. I just put the flashlight. That's what actually happened. <laughs> that created that, that, that moment. So, I looked at the different ways they uh, let you know that a bonus action happens, and there's quite a few of them. It's interspersed throughout all three books. And sometimes they say, uh, my favorite is you can do something as a bonus action. When condition X is happening, you can do something as a bonus action. It's very clear, very to the point, explains and, and, and instantly makes me realize, okay, well this situation has caused me to have this bonus action, bonus action, so I can do blank as a bonus action. It says that 88 times in all three books. Uh, my second favorite one is you can use a bonus action grant, or use the bonus action granted by blank. Once again, they say it a little bit differently, but it's very, very clear that, aha, this is where this bonus action has come from. So there's three times they said that. So there's a total of 91 times in the text, in these three books, that that's how they explain it. That's, what do they say otherwise? They say, using a bonus action, five times. Uh, or you can use a bonus action, like I just read in Two Weapon Fighting. Use a bonus action. Where does bonus action come from? I understand it comes from that, but terrible writing. 
and say that 46 times. Then they can also, it also says you can take a bonus action. From where? Or taking a bonus action. So they say that 11 and 2 times. So you add all those up together. The uh, using a bonus action, you can use a bonus action, you can take a bonus action, or taking a bonus action, and I end up with 64 times they say it that way. That's 41% of the time in the text that they tell you this bonus action is showing up in a very confusing manner. That's not consistent with the language they should have been using all the time, which is, you know, when this happens, as a bonus action, you can do this. It, you know, and it, it may sound like it's, it's semantics and I'm splitting hairs. No, I'm not. It's like English, dude. Do you speak it? And it's your job when you write books like this to be able to convey the information to the person that picks this book up to be able to figure out, well, how does this actually work? And if you're doing a lousy job doing that, if I, I've done this for a long, long time, since 1981, and if I have to go back and forth and, and leaf through the book back and forth, I ah, finally figured it out, what about the new person? It's just not cool. Not, not cool the way that it's written. Now, about the mechanic working, I kind of dig it. I mean, you know, they, they've divided up the, um, what happens in a round. What can you do in a combat round? You can move. You can take an action. There's a bunch of things they list as actions, like attacking, casting a spell, dashing, which is moving like double move, disengaging, so, so somebody can't have an opportunity to attack against you. You're disengaging. It's like a fighting retreat. Uh, dodging, which means you're just, you know, you're not attacking at all, but what you're doing is you're going full defensive and you're making people attack you at disadvantage. Uh, helping, you can aid another person. Um, hiding, you can try to hide. Uh, readying, readying an action. Searching for something, which made me laugh a little bit because rounds are six seconds long. And you know, I remember we used to take ten minutes to search a room. But, you know, I'll, I'll get to that at a different time. Um, also, what else? Can you, do? you can do things called reactions, which are just kind of like instinctive things. They're not quite like saving throws. Saving throws are something you can do as well. They don't explicitly say it in there, but that, that's something that unfortunately will happen to you from time to time during combat when somebody does something nasty to you. Many times you have to save, which is kind of a reaction itself. But these are just things that you, you know, instinctively kind of do, so they're not decisive actions. Um, let's see the bonus actions, which we talked about. Um, and you can also use an object, which I found very, uh, you know, very interesting. Here's the examples, which just, they make me laugh. Some of them are very um, obvious, and some of them... I scratch my head at this. Here's using an object. If you normally interact with an object while doing something else, uh, such as when you draw a sword as part of an attack, when an object requires your action for use, um, you take the use, use an object action. Uh, this is why you use, uh, use more than one object. Your first use of an object is free. After that, if you want to use a second object, then you have to, that's what you're doing with your action. You're not attacking or doing something else. So here's examples. Draw or sheathe the sword. Open or close the door. Withdraw a potion from your backpack. And you're attacking and moving it at the same time. Um, pick up a dropped axe. Take a bauble from a table. Remove a ring from your finger. Stuff some fruit into your mouth. Very useful during combat. Plant a banner in the ground. Fish a few coins from your belt pouch. Drink all the ale in a flagon. Throw a lever or a switch. Pull a torch from a sconce. Take a book from a shelf you can reach. Extinguish a small flame. Don a mask. Very useful in this day, day and age. Pull the hood of your cloak up and over your head uh, or put your ear to a door. Very, not a great idea to do it during combat. Kick a small stone, turn a key in a lock, tap the floor with a 10-foot pole, or hand an item to another character. You know? and so these things are all kind of things you can do for free. You can also talk really briefly to somebody else. Uh, but I like the way they, they divvied all that up. They kind of put it in different hierarchies of what these actions are. And they, I'll talk about the different actions an, another time. And for the most part, I find them to be fairly intuitive and, and fairly well-designed. And I find the the bonus action economy to be fairly well designed. Very often it gives you this idea that logically you can do this. When this happens, as a bonus action, you may do this. But man, the writing is really sloppy in like, you know, 41% of the time. It, you know, is, is unclear. And, you know, to make matters worse, the actual definition of bonus action, you know, doesn't let you know that sometimes it's not going to be a class feature or a spell or other ability. It's simply going to be something like you have a weapon in each hand. Uh, or, you know, is this another feature of the game to have a weapon in both hands? No, I think that's kind of a circumstance. So, crappy writing in the definition of what a bonus action is or what, you know, what allows a bonus action to happen. And then a large percentage of the time, really crappy writing in terms of, you know, letting you know that this um, circumstance has, you know, created a bonus action. Okay, kids, that's what I'm going to say about that. Have a good day.